All right, gravity. Does that have anything to do with verifying uh, God, the Bible? From a biblical perspective, Don De Young, De Young states, Gravity holds us firmly on the ground and also keeps the earth circling the sun. It draws rain from the sky and causes the tides. This mysterious gravity forces force continues to puzzle scientists even as it gives stability to the universe. How is gravity able to act across empty space? And why does it exist in the first place? Science has never been very successful in explaining such natural laws. After all, these universal rules cannot slowly arise by mutation or select natural selection. They must have been there all along. They have been here since the very beginning. Gravity, as well as every other intricate physical law and constant, is actually an absolute testimony to creation. So, two Bible verses especially help us understand the nat nature of gravity. First, Colossians 1.17 explains that Christ is before all things, and by him all things consist. The Greek verb for consist, sunistano, means to cohere, preserve, or hold together. The word is used in Colossians in the perfect tense, which describes a perfect continuing state arising from past action. This perfect state also implies permanence of the act of holding the universe together. If the Lord turned his back on the universe for one moment, instant chaos would result. Without gravity, the earth, moon, and stars would immediately disintegrate. The second reference, Hebrews 1.3, declares that God, Christ upholds all things by the word of his power. Uphold, the Greek enegko, again describes the sustaining or maintaining of all things, including gravity. The word uphold means much more than simply supporting a weight. It includes control of all the ongoing motions and changes within the universe. I guess if you studied and bring into this uh, discussion um, micro, uh, the, the uh, atomic, subatomic levels of matter, you see how the, this force of gravity seems to hold everything together. And when we experiment with that, with our subatomic machines, cyclotrons, and things like that, bombs, we find you release that power and it all falls apart or explodes out. Chaos. In any case, let's move up to another study. This is a study on the science, science and the scientific method, which includes our study about gravity and matter and so on. According to science over the centuries, the scientific method is limited by that which can be tested, reproduced, and falsified. That which lies outside of these parameters is not science. So evolution is not science because you can't reproduce, can't falsify, and really can't test. You can do certain little tests that point to the larger ideas of evolution or creationism. But, uh, and you see which maybe is more plausible than the other, or one completely disqualifies another in one point or another. But that which lies outside of these parameters is not science, but is in the realm of faith, of the untestable, such as evolution and creationism. As our technical ability to observe reality improves, we're able to increase the quality and quantity of our observations. Better observed data challenge our explanations, some of which will no longer fit the observed facts, hence are in error, theories and laws alike. So a theory, though, laws are, are, come from theories, and theories are science. Uh, sometimes you have a, uh, uh, models, but some parts of those models end up 
being theories are observable, repeatable, falsifiable. But they look at the smaller picture and you have to be plausible about how these fit together to point to and support one model or another. New theories are then formed and either verified or falsified against the scientific method, which assumes an absolute reality against which theories and laws can be verified. That of accurate observations, which absolutely reflect reality. Because if you can't reproduce the reality, you have a model and you have a guess. Sometimes that's all we have, and you try to put together these guesses or models to see which best fix, fits uh, what we can observe. Over the last several hundred years, a number of theories have been repeated so often and verified as accurate that they are now considered scientific laws, i.e. they correctly model the absolute truth of reality, such as the law of gravity. Should someone claim a point of view that contradicts one of these laws, the burden of proof is on that person to prove that they can repeatedly demonstrate that the law is false. The standard of measure remains absolute truth about reality, measured through repeated testing, observation, and falsification. Sometimes we see things that we say, that's a theory, or that's a law, and then as we go along through the ages, we have better ways of measuring and observing, and we find out, well, that wasn't uh, that law at all. For example, if statements by scientists reference to gravity, hypotheses, theories, laws, hypotheses is, is like a guesstimate based on certain measures that might support that that are in part scientific or not. They have contradicted one another over the centuries. That does not then lead to the conclusion that the characteristics of gravity itself have changed, i.e. that gravity is not absolute. The fault so far lies with faulty use of the scientific method. Often people write things and others accept these things that they've written as uh, scientific, that they've done their homework. And we find out later that they didn't. You select certain results that you like for uh, at the end uh, of an experiment and throw out the others because they don't support your point of view. That's not exactly scientific. Often, that's the method by which evolutionists support their points of view, and then we find so many discrepancies, uh, but they're still covered up. So over the centuries, there's never been definite, definitive scientific proof, even reasonable speculation, that gravity has been inconsistent, i.e. not absolute in its characteristics, for each specific circumstance when repeatedly tested, reproduced, and falsified within the parameters of that specific circumstance. Rather, gravity has been observed repeatedly over the centuries to behave in precisely the same way under each of every specific circumstance in accordance with the parameters of that circumstance without variance. Any reported variance has been due to incorrectly applying the scientific method and are drawing unwarranted conclusions. So, since gravity is unchanging, i.e. absolutely consistent in each and every circumstance when properly tested, reproduced and falsified within the parameters of that specific circumstance until proved otherwise that any points, theories, or laws of gravity over the centuries have been, which have contradicted one another are due to improper use of the scientific method and not to a changing nature of gravity. On the other hand, scientific, non-scientific points of view, such as the models of creationism, young earth, or evolution, old earth, which can only be based on unprovable assumptions, hence not scientific, because they cannot be tested, reproduced, and falsified, are most logically, hence best arrived at by examining those things which can be tested, reproduced, and falsified, which are as closely related to that hypothetical model as possible. Note that conclusions must be drawn which do not rule out one point of view just because it supports another. For example, more often than not, that which is tested to corroborate the possibility of evolution also corroborates the possibility of creationism equally well without ruling either, i.e. the result is inconclusive. 